Lauren Southern is a 22-year-old Canadian known as a libertarian political commentator who has previously worked for The Rebel Media, a Canadian online media website founded in February 2015. From March 2017, she has been active as an independent journalist. Her YouTube channel has half a million subscribers. Southern is a controversial media figure. She was mistakenly banned from Facebook a couple of years ago. She has been involved in protests against the saving of African refugees on the Mediterranean, who are then being shipped to Sicily. During these activities, she was detained by the Italian Coast Guard and Patreon deleted her account. In March this year, she was banned from entering the UK after having taken part in an event in the city of Luton in England in February, where she was distributing fl flyers saying Allah is a gay god as a response to accusations against the historical Jesus of having been gay. Leaving her protest against rescuing refugees on the Mediterranean aside, I don't support her so-called social experiment in Luton, not just because I'm critical of the gay rights movement, but also because it was an intentional and unnecessary provocation of local Muslims. On the other hand, it says quite a deal about a nation that considers itself democratic and liberal, that it chooses to ban a person with no criminal record and no terrorist affiliations from entering the country just on the grounds of such an event. It is a serious affront against free speech and the values of the West. Earlier this year, Southern went with a camera team to South Africa to make a documentary about the slaughtering of South African farmers with a European origin, something that has been going on for years. She has since published excerpts from her interviews with locals on her channel. This was a very important initiative because Western mainstream media do not report on it. There is in fact a Wikipedia article on the topic called South African Farm Attacks, where it is stated that both so-called white farmers and black farm workers are subjected to violent crime, including murder. The South African government claims that the farm attacks are part of a broader crime problem in South Africa and that they do not have a racial motivation. Government officials say the chief motive for the farm attacks is robbery. But according to Southern, a South African of European origin is currently four times as likely to be murdered in the country than a native African. The crimes involve not just robbery but also murder and torture, including mutilation and rape, also of children and often for days, and thousands of farmers have already been killed. It also does not explain the fact that people with fair skin who lose their homes and end up in camps are denied hospitalization and also schooling for their children. The government has not had an analysis made of farm attack victims by a race since 2001, which is enough to raise suspicion. In fact, the government no longer collects any racial statistics around crime whatsoever. In March 2010, the government openly defended the apartheid era song Kill the Boer, although a regional high court had ruled it as hate speech, and it was openly sung by the ANC Youth League leader Julius Malema. This says quite a deal about the attitude of the ruling ANC government towards race. Human Rights Watch has noted the lack of government response to the farm attacks. The South African Police Service fails to prevent these attacks, for which reason farming communities have set up armed patrols in their areas. 
According to the AFRI Forum, politicians, including ministers, incite hate and aggression against the farmers. The farmers used to be protected by commando units, but in 2003 the government began disbanding these as belonging to what they considered to have been the apartheid state's security apparatus. This makes the government directly responsible for the present situation. Obviously, the rainbow state is an illusion and a lie. Notably, there is no information about the international reaction to the crimes in the Wikipedia article, except from Australia. What does Lauren Southern have to say about the situation after having spent weeks in the country driving around and interviewing a great number of people, victims as well as government officials? According to Southern, there is an immense hatred against people of European origin in South Africa. Many of the farmers feel trapped in the country. They cannot get out for financial reasons and because they are tied to the land. The ANC is now taking land from people with a European origin without compensation, i.e. the state is stealing land from certain of its citizens because of skin color, which is openly racist. Many of these farms go back eight or nine generations, and the Dutch arrived in South Africa well before the Zulus, who now make up the ANC, which is ruling South Africa. The natives who were there when the Dutch arrived have no political power in South Africa today and they are being despised by the Zulus. Africans of a certain tribe tend to be racist towards other tribes. They are very class conscious and conscious of their position in society. During apartheid, the native African population in South Africa multiplied several times over. A lot of Africans came as illegal immigrants from neighboring countries because they want, wanted to get access to first world food, water, medicine and security. The reason for South Africa's prosperity was European farming methods and European expertise. Now these people are being driven out of the country or even murdered. Many in the government are Marxists who support central planning instead of the free market. Southern describes them as being jealous and hateful of rich people and of people who don't look like them, that is, citizens with a European background. The politicians think the people will be as wealthy if native Africans own all land in the country, but they do not take education and know-how into consideration. Out of ignorance, Africans over-farm the land, which is especially obvious in the so-called black tribing homelands, which cannot be owned by people of European origin. These African farmers are ruining the land for good. There are huge canyons of corroded land that just becomes a pit in the ground that can never be used again. The result of unskilled people taking over the farms will be an enormous food crisis, she says. The politics of the so-called black economic empowerment means that companies who want a government contract are only allowed to hire a certain percentage of South Africans with a European origin corresponding to their percentage of the population, which currently is 8%. This includes things like energy companies, which of course need skilled engineers. The lack of technical expertise has led to a massive water crisis in the country. Cape Town, for example, is running out of water because companies have fired engineers because of their skin color. The party called the Economic Freedom Fighters, who have about 10% of the votes, openly propose the killing of fair-skinned South Africans, which makes them into racist terrorists. ANC pretends to reject the EFF, but the end result of their politics is the same, namely to take the land that has belonged to people of European origin for generations without compensation. 
The government has now changed the laws to be able to take the land legally. In Zimbabwe, the government drove out everyone with their European origin and crash, crashed the economy. Likewise, Southern depicts an economic crash in South Africa within the next five to ten years because of the racist government politics. South Africa today is an aggressive, tribalistic world. A lot of ANC politicians have witch doctors living in their house, advising them. Native Africans Southern spoke to told her that they preferred to live under apartheid, because under apartheid people were punished for their crimes, which is not the case today. Stefan Molyneux interviewed Lauren Southern on his channel about her journey to South Africa. According to Molyneux, you cannot have a free market in a society where people just rob and steal what they want, and the government is ignoring it because of skin color. Western media have commentators in the country, but they don't send them to the areas, Southern says. It is not at all difficult to find material. Southern went in there with just one contact, and she got a lot of material in a short time. It's a massive story which is just left out for racial reasons. Imagine a case of torture and murder based on racism in the West, Molyneux says. It would be in the media for months. This happens every day in South Africa with no media reports. As Molyneux notes, these racist crimes could not occur if they were exposed by Western media. The South African government would have to react. The silence of the media makes these journalists into accomplices in the crimes. They have blood on their hands. The reason why mainstream media in the West does not discuss this, he says, is because they don't want people thinking about what is going to happen following a population replacement in the West. They don't want Westerners to imagine themselves hiring private security and living a life indoors, in constant fear of being mutilated, raped and murdered, after they became a minority in their own country. Sadly, Molyneux has a point. A lot of people in Muslim countries support Sharia law. Muslims make up 10% of the Swedish population already today, and the percentage is growing every year, since Muslims have more children than native Swedes. What if the Muslims become a majority in countries like Sweden or the UK in the future and vote through Sharia law and laws which discriminate the native population? These countries will change forever. It will mean an end to their cultural traditions, to free speech and to freedom.